Recently, I was at a dinner party with a number of different friends, and this was certainly a really mixed group of individuals from a lot of different backgrounds. And two of the folks that were there were in the solar power industry, and they were talking about installing solar systems on people's homes and in businesses around town. So as I sat there kind of shamelessly eavesdropping on their conversation, which was really fascinating to me at the time, I was reminded of the importance of having a common set of terminology and nomenclature to describe and talk about things with your peers. Now, this is true across all industries, and it's extremely relevant when we begin talking about the relationship between traditional information technology and what we call cloud computing. To understand how cloud computing fits into the larger picture, we need to go back quite a ways, back to the original relationship between software and hardware. So over on the left here, I am just going to draw a really generic quote-unquote system. And this does not have to mean anything particularly fancy. It could be a laptop, it could be a cell phone, it could be your home router, or it could be the fancy schmancy YouTube servers out there that you're watching this video on. Any technical system that exists out there basically has two different components to it. You have the software on the top, and you have some sort of hardware on the bottom. Now, the reason behind the two different roles are very, very different. The software provides us the basic logic that controls what the hardware will do, and the hardware provides us two key things. It gives us the power to perform that logic, and it also often gives us some sort of physical interface for interacting with the software itself. Imagine using a computer mouse or keyboard or using the touch screen on a tablet. Those are all examples of being able to pass instructions and input into the software so that it can perform some of that logic that we wrote for it. A great analogy to help explain this is to imagine a race car and a driver. The race car is certainly very powerful and it provides a useful way to get around the track, but it is absolutely useless without the driver to steer and control the vehicle. And like I said before, this basic principle between software and hardware exists in every piece of technology out there. Now, if we take a closer look inside that software layer, we can see that there's really two different layers that are at work. We have an application, and then we have what is called an operating system that runs underneath of it. A good way to think about this is to imagine the world of mobile devices. An application would be the apps that you buy from the Google Play Store or from the Apple Store, and the operating system would be like Android or the iPhone operating system. And if you're familiar with it, it could be Microsoft Windows or Linux. And if we take a closer look at the hardware, we can see that there's really four different pieces at work here, and those are referred to as compute resources. These are the various hardware components that allow the software to perform its functionality. The first and most important part is the central processing unit, which executes all of the instructions. After that, you have your random access memory, RAM, which is a working area for the CPU to execute its instructions in followed by storage, which is a place to keep information when we're not actively working with it. And then last but not least, there is networks, which allow us to send information back and forth between different systems. Wow, so we just went from a pretty simple two-tier definition of what a system is into a much more complex look at all of the interworkings of it. This sort of complexity and simplification being contrasted is exactly what cloud computing is all about. We are saying, if I am a software developer and I care about applications, then I don't really want to deal with the operating system or managing any of the compute resources. This is exactly where cloud computing really begins to shine. And it all comes down to really two basic options that we have. Oh wow, I'm looking at the clock, and looking at the clock, I'm reminded of what these two options are because right now I am beginning to feel hungry. And so if you are hungry, you really have a couple of different options available to you. The first option would be for you to go in the kitchen, get out the old cutting knife there, and begin chopping up some food. Go ahead and throw it in a pan, cook it for however long you need to to make sure that it gets done, and then throw that thing on a plate, and then nom, nom, nom. Pretty straightforward, and depending on your skills and abilities, you may have varying degrees of success with the execution of your lunch plan. And of course, the other option would be for you to go down the street to your favorite diner, walk in there, place an order, and then boom, moments later, you have food on your plate and you're eating with very little and almost minimal effort. And this appetizing and humorous demonstration is an example of the contrast between a do-it-yourself approach, where we buy the ingredients, cook the food ourselves, and then eat it, Whereas the diner was an example of what they call as a service. I went to a restaurant that provides a food preparation service and they made the lunch for me. And keep in mind that this DIY option that I've proposed here is only possible if we have the skills necessary. Whereas with the as a service model, I need only know what I want and ask for it. 
So back over to our system, how does this help us run technical services? Well, the principle is basically the same. In the do-it-yourself world, I go out and I build the system from scratch. This could mean writing the software, buying and maintaining the hardware, taking care of the system throughout its life cycle, possibly replacing the system if it gets too old or out of date. It also often means having to buy the system birthday presents and remembering when their birthday is. Wah, 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 wah. Or I could go to a cloud computing vendor and the cloud computing vendor might be able to provide me the hardware. And that means that I only need to focus on using the software. Interestingly enough, cloud computing services get even more diverse than that. And in many situations, they'll even provision the software for you. And that means that really me, all I have to do is go through and be a user and work with the software rather than having to manage it. So in this way, cloud computing vendors offer us hardware and software solutions as a service. And this allows businesses across all of the world's industries to choose what part of the technology world they want to do themselves and which parts they would rather have someone do for them by using a cloud-based service. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about this in a separate set of terms. You'll hear say that we can build a solution, we could buy a solution. And interestingly, there is also a third option called rent. And as you look at those three, you might be recognizing that, hey, those are basically the same options that we have when we think about how to come up with a housing solution. I could build a home, I could buy a home that's pre-built, or I could rent some other place that someone else has built for a short term. When we compare build versus buy versus rent in the cloud computing world, we see that there is a varying amount of cost associated with it. We also see that there is a varying amount of effort required for each solution. And last but not least, there is also a certain amount of skills required in order to accomplish it. And so in general, as we move from left to right across this screen, we see that the cost is reduced. We also see that the amount of effort required is reduced and the amount of skills required is reduced as well. These are all critical selling points behind why cloud computing is such an appealing target for so many businesses right now, and exactly why it's one of the industry's hottest career fields for us to get into. So in closing, we learned that cloud computing allows organizations to take complex technical infrastructure and all of that administrative effort required and simplify it in a number of different ways, allowing them to focus more on the things that matter to their business. We also learned that organizations are able to help choose more granularly between do-it-yourself options and having a cloud service provider do the work for us in an as-a-service model. And finally, we talked about how cloud computing helps enrich that build versus buy versus rent opportunity, allowing organizations to choose between cost, the amount of effort required, and allowing them to augment skills that they may or may not possess. Be sure to check out the rest of my cloud computing career lessons, and I'll see you there. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.